In a previous video on Eve NG, we added the ASAV to our Eve NG engine. And what we're going to do in this video is actually have some fun with it. So you can see I've dropped in my ASAV into a new topology as well as routers 1 and routers 3. These routers are Dynamips images that I grabbed and inserted into Eve. So let me grab one more of those. So we'll go to add node here. I'll scroll down and we can see our Dynamips iOS 7206 image. We'll select that. This router will be named R2. And then we'll scroll down to the idle PC value and I'll paste in the idle PC appropriate for this image. And then finally, we will select a fast ethernet interface for slot one. I'll then save this by clicking save down the bottom. We'll take our router and we'll put it out here to represent an outside device. Now it's time to connect these devices. So we'll click on the connector object and then we will drag it over to the router 2, for example, and we'll choose our interfaces. Gig 0 slash 0 will be perfect to 0 slash 0 of R2. And let me just move this window so I can click the save button. All right, got it. And then we are going to drag this connector tool up to R3. This will be the 0 slash 2 interface on the ASA that we want connected to 0 slash 0 on router 3. We'll save that. And then finally drag the connector tool to our inside device. 0 slash 1 will be perfect. Fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 on R1 is perfect. I will say save. And there we go. There's our topology. It is time to run this topology. Now, if resources are a concern for you, you might want to kind of fire these up one at a time. I'm going to be brave, though, even while recording a video, and I'm going to select all the devices by clicking and dragging. I'm then going to right click and choose Start Selected. So we'll fire all of them up at once. Off to the right, you'll get notifications in Eve that each of these nodes is starting. And I'll just give this a moment to spin up and be right back with our demonstration of configuring this equipment. Now, while that's spinning up, let's take a look at the status. So over on the left in EVENG, there is a button where you can view the status. And notice we're doing really good here. So we've got one ASA and three routers. And the CPU, memory usage, disk usage, it's all doing just fine. And what really makes this impressive is the fact that I'm running Camtasia Studio right now in order to record this video. So you can imagine if you're not doing that, you'll be doing even better on resource usage. So what I'd like to demonstrate now is to use this equipment in order to do the initial bootstrapping of the adaptive security appliance, do the basic network connectivity. So we're not only seeing how to work with Eve in this video, but we're also getting a little bit of like CCNA security from Cisco Systems into the mix. So I'll begin on the R1 device. I click on it and then choose open link and that'll pop up uh, inside of, it looks like Putty is my client. And no, we don't want to enter the initial configuration. But what we do want to do is blow this text up so you can see it better. So let me just do that. I'll be right back. All right, that looks better. So what I'm going to do on this router is configure that fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 interface. We're going to no shut it. And then we are going to assign an IP address. So we'll say IP address. And for the inside addressing, let's use the 10.x address space. So I'll say like 10, 10, 10 10.1 with a 24-bit mask. And that's it. This configuration, oh, I suppose we should give the router a name. That'd be nice of us. This is hostname R1. There we go. So there's our configuration, simple on R1, just giving the IP address to the interface. All right, so not to bore you, I went to the other two routers and upped their interfaces and gave them IP addresses. 
And now for the fun part, we're going to go to the Cisco ASA. There's no password on the ASA. And we're going to get the interfaces ready to go for our environment. I'll begin with the inside interface. So what we're going to do is go to interface gigabit 0 slash 1. We selected for the inside interface. And we're going to use the name if command to give it the name of inside. It recognizes the name of inside and it sets the security level to the most secure level. From 0 to 100, it sets it at 100, recognizing that common name of inside for the adaptive security appliance. Next, we're going to assign our IP address. So it'll be 10.10.10.100 with a 24-bit mask. That looks good. We'll make sure this interface is not in the shutdown state. And then we'll go ahead and ping the inside router to see if this bootstrapping has functioned properly. So let me ping the inside R1 and we can see we can ping that inside router just fine. Excellent. Notice how we can do pings and commands like this while in interface configuration mode on the adaptive security appliance without needing to supply the do command. That's a really nice feature of the ASA. All right, next up, it's our gigabit zero slash zero interface. This will no shut. We'll do a name if. This is going to be our outside interface. It automatically recognizes that name and sets the security level to zero by default. If you wanted to manipulate the security level, by the way, you could with the security level command, but we're fine with the default selections here. And we need to give the IP address on this interface. I did the 192.168.1 network on the outside. This will be dot 100 with the appropriate mask. We will ping the router that we have located on the outside world. That's at dot two and success there. One last interface to go then, it's gigabit ethernet zero slash two. We'll do our no shut. We'll do our name interface. This will be DMZ for a name. It sets it to zero. We don't want that. So we'll set a security level of 50 and then we'll do our IP address. I put that subnet in 172.16.1 and this will be dot 100. There we go. We'll ping the device that lives out there. And that is at dot three. And we have success. So we have the adaptive security appliance with all three of its interfaces in the three different security zones configured with the appropriate security levels for our scenario. And we just verified that we can reach devices that live in each of those security zones. In the next video that I'll be producing for you soon, we'll have some fun with this topology, doing some experimentation on communicating from these devices through the adaptive security appliance in the configuration that we just made together. But for right now, what I'd like to do is save this thing and shut it down. So what I'm going to do is select all of my nodes once again in EVNG, and then I'm going to right click one of those nodes and I'm going to export all of my configurations. By exporting the configurations, we'll be able to then start these devices with those exported configurations so we can pick up just where we left off. So it looks like R1 from my notification messages on screen had a little problem. No problem. You can't see the notification messages, but just trust me, they're in the top right of the EVNG interface. So R1 had a little bit of a hiccup in the export. So let me manually do that one device and let's see if the export succeeds for that one device. Oh, yikes, failed again. Let me pause the video and troubleshoot this. All right, so no problem. Um, what I did was went over and took a look at R1 and it had been logged out. So all I did was log in, get into uh, privileged mode once again on that device 
And then I did my, uh, in fact, I'll close that session. I did my right click and do my export CFG and it worked just fine. So we had been spit out of the R1 device and that's why the configuration export did not function. So now that we've got everything saved, we are ready to go ahead and select all the nodes, right click and stop all of these selected nodes. In a subsequent video, I'll show you how we can fire these devices up with the configuration that we have placed inside them on this video, and we'll do some further work with the Adaptive Security Appliance, as I promised. Have a great rest of the day, and thanks so much for watching.